Your voice, your opinion, your community. Fact TV, free speech, protected. But lignum vitae was used even back in the time of sailing ships. It was oh. it's it was been recognized been for ages oh, I see. for its huh. advantage. Wow! And uh, and so that spins. But the blade pattern is there's no definite you know right or wrong for the blade pattern. Ours is different than this turbine, and uh, and I don't know how many different patterns they use, but this one is uh, I think kind of beautiful. You know, it's kind yeah, of sort of photogenic. Oh my gosh, that's heavy too. That's the wood, and that wow. is uh, that is us uh, is being grown in plantations as we speak in the northern Caribbean, where it's native to, um, and and that turbine is uh, going to spin when water is released from this pipe over here. This pipe goes into the mill pond, and this is called a penstock. And uh, that is 20 inches diameter, and it has what's called a head, which is the vertical distance it drops from the water from the top to the bottom of the turbine. And by the time it hits the turbine, that 15-foot drop through a 20-inch pipe here is the, about uh, 2,000 pounds, about a ton. So when you see those blades that we looked at before, it's getting, you know, you have a, a huge you know, about a ton pushing into that spiral turbine. And then it, uh, because of the shape, configuration of the cups on the bottom, the blades, it'll spin the shaft. So I'm just preparing you. Uh, there, there won't be much noise, but things will stop moving. <laughs> this will start moving. That is, a, is a, called a quarter turn flat belt, and that will drive this line shaft. So that whole line shaft will start turning. And then it'll come back through a belt to this smaller line shaft over here, the one in the distance, which we need to put a light on. <laughs> um, that one is uh, is going to drive a machine upstairs, and there belt there's a belt from that one that goes straight up through the floor, and that is uh, is hooked up to a bandsaw upstairs. So it's a long journey as the energy goes <laughs> up to up to the to the bandsaw, and we it. Back in World War I, they put a threshing machine upstairs in the mill, and so they had belting running all the way up to the threshing machine. And they also had a cordwood saw out in the front yard. So they ran belting enormous distances, and it was very efficient. So that runs, that powers tools, and uh, and then we have a second smaller turbine. I showed you the inside of it was totally. Oh, water! We shut it off uh -huh. because it leaks. Then you can't waste the water. So what I'm doing is filling up this pin stop here by opening this valve. Try to do it, but it opened only about halfway. Okay, now. So you'll see water coming out of that turbine, and you'll see the vertical shaft spinning. It will then come over here with a quarter turn flat belt, and it's going to spin this counter shaft. Do you want me to wait? Nope. Okay. And this counter shaft turns a generator over here from uh, it's a 1954 car generator. <laughs> and this was here from probably the early 60s on to demonstrate lighting this light bulb. So we've reconstructed it. We're going to try to light these ceiling light bulbs by turning it on. Okay, 
Okay, so these sealing plate loads, some of them anyway, now you see them flickering a little bit. That's because of the other side. So what we have on that shaft also, if you go in the other direction, there's a black belt, and that's turning a car alternator, which you can actually go down if you want to get a closer look at. Pulley also drives the car alternator, and because the car alternator requires a very high level of RPMs, and this doesn't have enough RPMs. We have two wheels here, and we've stepped up the number of RPMs to an adequate amount to generate electricity with a car alternator, 12 volts, and then we store it in the, in the battery over here. So you needed to shift this belt onto this wheel, which is locked to this. So if I turn that wheel, you can see, you can see the, yeah, now you've got a drive wheel that can run the bandsaw. Oh. And, uh, and here we have a modern bandsaw right next to it. <laughs> <laughs> and notice the additional safety protections. Oh, sure, yeah. So, um, so when you pull that back and forth, what you're doing is you're switching the belt from the drop from the idle wheel, what's called the idler. Mm -hmm. You're shifting it to the, to the uh, drive wheel or the traction wheel, and then it goes on. And like a lot of these machines, one shaft will then be combined so there will be a variety of things turning. It will not only turn the blades, but it will also turn the track belt. This will move along carrying the wood and uh, a lot of other neat things. <laughs> this was really a community place. Even when Hartley, Heeman's uh, stepfather, when he built it, he had a saw out there so people could come and do their firewood. Oh, you know, yeah. he had the threshing so that people during the war, World War I, could have, get, have their own flour. Mm -hmm. So this was a community place from the time that Hartley rebuilt it. And so we want this to be used. So a friend of the mill, um, Jason Breen from Brattleboro, who was a um, furniture maker, using the old tools, this is a 19th century model of workbenches. And in the community way, he designed them from pictures. Uh, he gave the wood for the legs. Uh, the wood for the taff was, uh, top was from Taffy Brown. The wood for the sides was from Grant Taylor. Grant uh, did it all. Then Jim uh, cut it up into uh, kits. And then he sent the kits out to people to make. And then they're back here. So again, a real community yeah. uh, effort to have these fabulous workbenches. And then, uh, these are new cabinets, obviously. However, although this is newer wood, again donated by Taffy Brown, this is 1938 hurricane wood. And if you come up here, I don't have them open today because we don't need them, but you can see the um, wormholes in, this, in the wood. In the sides. Uh, because they, this wood has been sitting in this mill since it was um, cut in after, after the 1938 wow. hurricane, just wow. sitting on ties um, up top. And so this is now where our more modern uh, equipment is being uh, contained and held safe. Heyman, um, who was like Bob's grandfather and um, his wife Edith was my preschool teacher, uh, <laughs> so we've been around the mill forever. But here we have a drill press and um, the electrical spot is right here. It's the old alligator clip, as you can see, which we as children were allowed to use, but of course, God forbid anyone uses it today. <laughs> yeah, really. But if he wanted to use this, he'd have to go over here to turn on the electricity, then come back and use it. So Heeman did the an older style remote control. Oh, so he so has... He a tension the belt or well you'll as you follow it you'll see it starts here goes along a couple scab together pieces it comes over whoops oh, what am i tripping it comes the... down to this metal which goes along <laughs> over to here which then has a cord that connects to the top of that and <laughs> this is loud so you might jump as i do this so okay. then when you turn <laughs> Depending on what belts are attached, he can use lots of different things. 
So this is, this belt looks like it's unattached right now. Mm -hmm. But this is, so um, there, as you can see, there were uh, ways to attach belts for lots of machinery all the way along. So, beautiful. anyway, so this is our community room where we have meetings. Um, we probably can't hold too many dances anymore. <laughs> um, but we did have a wedding here, and oh, really? uh, not recently. Yeah, but, but, uh, um, where there used to be square dances in the old days. I did swing dancing up here, and <laughs> as well as square and contra dancing. And all of these models were built by Heman to show different eras of water power. So here we have an up and down saw. The water comes in through the flume or the penstock as he uh, called it downstairs and which then turns, it's an overshot wheel in this case, and it turns the wheel and then the saw heads up and down. It is said that the Millers, um, oops, what's this doing here? It is said that the Millers would start their saw going, go home and go have breakfast, come <laughs> back, and it's still that line would not go. <laughs> it only took a quarter of an inch each time. Oh, yeah. Each, and it was only advanced a quarter of an inch. We've got our gate that the miller could open, allowing the water to start flowing, which will turn our wheels onto the lantern wheel. The, the raw material would have come in at the second floor, which would have been up here, except over in the L section. It goes into the hopper. It goes down the hopper. Here are your wheel, your, um, the miller just fell over. Here are your <laughs> Little stones, stones yeah. that are going to do the, the turning. And it works its way to the edge. Then it goes down the shaft into a container. And as this is turning, the, whoops, something is caught here, just a second, what? okay. <laughs> it then comes back up to the top, into the hopper, and then is bagged as it drops down Jeez. through the hopper. But when our gold miners went out west, they were working off of those small streams, you know, they weren't in big rivers, mm -hmm. they were in the small streams. So a man named Pelton worked to design a new kind of um, wheel. These are not particularly Pelton wheels because the real Pelton wheels were like this but it, they had a middle section that cupped. Mm -hmm. And so they mm -hmm. they picked up a lot of water that was coming as here Heman says high heads but small flow. So it's just that stream coming in it would hold that water for the when it had the most power which is right there and then it would dump it out. Uh -huh. So it would cup that water, hold it as much as it could for that short moment. So the Pelton wheel was designed for our gold miners. These are some of the things that during Heman's time children made uh, while they were at the mill. Um, and um, we're missing the big horse barn, um, <laughs> but Taffy will bring it at some point. Hartley's son, uh, Devin, was a, uh, his, his, um, his furniture sells for big bucks on, on the internet. Uh, and, but he, these are all just models of things that he could make. These are uh, different. Yeah, they're all working. Spring classes this summer. We are finally opening. We were hoped to last year, but this year we're having classes. There's going to be a timber frame wor workshop, which isn't going to do a big uh, building, but this is um, one of the instructors. This is his house. Um, one of the instructors is going to be doing carving. This is the threat was a threshing room. And you can see where the belts came up through the floors. Uh, the, uh, the farmers would bring their hay in here. They'd come in through the windows. And this is where the threshing was set up. Mm -hmm. um, 
This is one of the old pian this is an old piano that was here, an old square piano. We couldn't stand to get rid of it, so we tore it apart, and now we're making it into the desk. <laughs> you guys are so clever. Yeah. And you even have is this a for a uh, handicapped accessibility it idea? It is. Yeah. It is. We we did it kicking and screaming um, only because we thought it would change the mill so much. And I have to say, our architect did a great nice job, job. Uh, just sort of having it there and now the community room is available to everybody so um, which is just fabulous so Heman went away to school in Pennsylvania and he really missed the fact that he wasn't on the ground as this was being rebuilt mm -hmm. and so Hartley sent him quite detailed uh, letters about what they were doing and uh -huh. uh, so that's one of our best records of wi how, when things happened yeah, where yeah. did things come from uh, and so that is our um that is our mill it's amazing you guys it have is. done an amazing job it's it is wonderful that we've had so much community support that we've been able to get grants that allow us to save this place. Yeah. So, um